coming today, and I'm thinking, what am I going to tell the people today that's interesting? I don't have a new grandchild today. No. So I'm putting my instruments in the car, and I walked out from the car across the street, and I got run down by a bicycle. <laughs> Just about an hour ago. You still have blood on your pants. I know. I'm very impressive. I went flat on my face. My watch there is up broken. But I didn't get hurt other than that. And I was, I felt so bad for the guy in the bike because I kept saying, is your bike okay? <laughs> I don't know You're a true, a true. But he couldn't have been looking either. I didn't, I didn't run onto the street. I just walked out to the street and then, boom! <laughs> but then we went to the, to the CLSC. They saw me right away, bandaged me up, gave me a tetanus shot, and said, go for it. All right. <laughs> so now we're going to play some, some music. And the banjo came over from Africa about 200 years ago. And it was made with a gourd and three strings. And it was a very primitive instrument. But the black slaves used it a lot. Then uh, the people living in North Carolina and Virginia and those areas uh, started taking interest in the banjo. They began to fiddle around with adding more strings. Instead of three strings, they went to four strings. And then in 18, uh, I think it's 1821, 1821, a, a guy named John Sweeney uh, developed the idea of adding a fifth string, a little short string very high pitched and uh, it's like a drum. You don't, you don't actually think of that string. So the five string banjo started off around 1821. And the first ones that were made by the local people were made all of wood. This is cherry wood. I had this made for me by a fellow named Clifford Glenn in Sugar Grove, North Carolina. And uh, I went down to his house in the, in the mountains to pick it up. And that's it, it's beautiful. No, there's no screws, it's all glued with these wooden dolls to hold it together. It's a beautiful little instrument. So I'm going to do a, a song from down in Virginia. Because so your leg, if you want me to, to I'm okay, I'm okay. When I go home, I'm going to have a scotch.
So this is another old-timey mountain song. And the style of banjo that I play is called claw hammer. Uh, there's, there's two styles. The most famous style nowadays is the Scruggs style, Lester Flat Earl Scruggs. Uh, and he does a finger picking style. It's very fast. Uh, the style I'm playing is more like what they did in the African days. You, you, you don't pick, you just use your hand like a claw and you're hammering down on the strings. And your thumb is picking the high string. So in that style, the banjo is more like a percussion instrument, like a drum, than it is like a musical instrument. It's all, it's all that hammer down.
I don't have a big band. So I have a sponge. <coughs> but this is the kind of song that was really good for this kind of movement. one song and then he would spend a half an hour in bed recovering and he did his whole record like that and it's the Jimmy it's called it you can get it in CD today it's called Jimmy Rogers his last recordings it's very wonderful and you can hear in his voice the vulnerability of a man who's dying of tuberculosis but still wants to play and sing he's one of my favorite musicians but I'm going to do a couple of songs by him today but since I got this tenor banjo out, I'm going to do Memphis Yodel. Thank you. 
I do have access to hummus. And hummus comes in little plastic containers at the grocery store. And the lids of a hummus uh, container are a really nice piece of plastic. So you cut them in the shape of a pick, and uh, they work just as good as a pick. So you can do things like, uh, this is a song called, Likes Liquor Better Than Me. Is weeping, and there is. 
was invented by a guy in Germany called uh, August Gunther. Gunther, G-U-T-T-E-R. August Gunther. And um, came to North America in about 1882. And when the auto harp was first uh, developed, its intention was to put it flat on a desk like this. And you could teach young people, like this girl here, <laughs> how to play music without having to know anything about music because you have all these strings and you have these felt pads on these bars and they tell you what the chord is. This is a G major. You press the, chord, the, the, the bar and the felt pads block out all the strings that are not supposed to sound. It just leaves the strings that make up the G chord. So, this is how its intent was. You play it like this. So people might do a song like, Will the circle be unbroken by and by, no by. It's a very simple instrument. And they brought it over from, uh, uh, they started off with this in Boston and Philadelphia. It became very popular in the schools for teaching young people music. And then some salesmen decided they would take it down south to Tennessee, uh, North Carolina, Virginia, to try and see if they could market it down there. Well, they did sell some. But the people down in the mountains, the Appalachian Mountains, you know, they, they, they thought that was really, the day I said, they thought it sucks. Because <laughs> they're used to these kind of instruments, they have good things. So, a lady named Maybell Carter, of the Carter family, said, oh, I wonder if I pick it up like this, you know, like, crave it like a baby, and then I could strum. <laughs> So I'm going to try and stand so you can see, but this is the way she played with a certain deal. Will the circle be unbroken by and by, oh by and by, a little better hold away in the sky, Lord. I must 
of people who were songwriters. They would go and they would go to their work every day and write music and then try to sell it. Up the lazy river by the old mill run The lazy, hazy river in the noonday sun Think out in the shade a kind old Throw away your trouble, dream of me. Up a lazy river where the robin song awakes a bright new morning. We will loaf along. Blue skies up above, everyone's in love. Up a lazy river, how happy you will be. Up a lazy river with me. Now you know why my mother couldn't help but fall in love with my father. Oh, 
along The skies up above Everyone's in love Up the lazy river How happy you will be Up a lazy river Susanna, don't you cry. 
in jail down in the south, and uh, he he was writing music and singing songs. So they, they got him out of jail, and uh, he became their chauffeur. He was their chauffeur, but he also did a lot of performances, and he became very famous. Uh, this is a particular song of his. Uh, Called Ain't No More Cane on the Brazos. The Brazos is a river down in Texas. Ain't no more cane on the Brazos. Oh, they it all I think it's only got two strings, it's got to be easy to play. Uh, I got home and I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't get anything going with it. I was walking down St. Catherine Street one day, and on the street, right in front of Sam's the Record Man, was this guy playing a Chinese arho with his hat out, busking for money. So I went up to him and I said, hey, do you give lessons? And he says, no, no, you have to have one of these. I said, I got one. He says, okay, I'll give you lessons. And I went there for four years. Every Sunday I went to his flat for four years. He could never teach me to play the art. Impossible. I don't read music to start with, so I have to learn it by this. And, and even though I love Chinese music, I could never, I could never get it into my head. Anyway, after the reason my lessons stopped, I mean, I didn't give up. But my lesson stopped because one day Lei Zhang phoned me and said, John, uh, have you ever heard of Cirque du Soleil? I said, yeah. He said, are they a good company? I said, yeah, pretty good, man. <laughs> Very successful. Why? He says, well, because they, I was playing in the subway down at the metro, and this guy walked up to me and asked me if I wanted to get a job with the Cirque du Soleil. And I don't know who they are. <laughs> Make a long story short, I told him, go for it. So he moved to Las Vegas. This is 1998. And he got a job with the musical the, called O. So he's been there. He's still, he's still there. He gets really good pay. But anyway, 
she never taught me how to play the R hoop. Uh, what I did learn was I could apply this to my kind of music. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. It took my pain away. <laughs> 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 